Life of Monkey D. Luffy, Part 2, One Piece. Previously on the Amagi. North, South, East, West, long ago, the four quarters of the Blue Sea lived together in harmony-ish, but everything changed when the Age of Pirates attacked. Only Monkey D. Luffy, the captain of the Straw Hats, can find Gold D. Rogers' treasure, the One Piece, and become King of the Pirates. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo, his name is Luffy. He's made of rubber. How did that happen? Yo, ho, ho, he took a bite of gum gum. Recruit Zoro, he's like a samurai and an L.A.D.Y. Nami's not shy. Usopp's doing that marksman thing. Sanji's cooking. Chopper's doctoring. He also had a run-in with his brother and picked up Vivi and defeated Crocodile, and now we're here. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Monkey D. Luffy Part 2. Before we begin, we publish a new video pretty much every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond on just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Sky Island Saga, Goat Island Arc. While being chased by the Marines, led by Moore and Minchi, Luffy and his crew get lost in the fog and discover an uncharted island. They find that the island is inhabited only by an old man named Zenny and a multitude of goats. They also find a partially constructed ship on the top of the island. Because of his bad heart, Zenny probably only has three days left to live. Hoping to make his last days good ones, the Straw Hat Pirates help him out and they learn about Zenny's past as a moneylender and his dream of becoming a pirate. Realizing that Zenny has outlived Chopper's predictions, the Straw Hats decide that after helping him finish his pirate ship, they'll leave the island. The Straw Hats help out the old man while hiding from the Marines and work to get his ship in the water. With Luffy's help, Zenny and his goats were able to attack the Marines. The Straw Hat Pirates then went forth to help him. They defeated Minchie and tied him up. Luffy then threw Minchie back on Captain Moore's ship and Captain Moore allowed him to choose their battle location. Zenny decided to follow his dream and become a pirate, despite his age, and they part ways. Luffy then pointed to the Marines a foggy area for a battle location, which caused Captain Moore's ships to land in a shipwreck due to the rocks. Luffy and the Straw Hats are now chased by a Marine ship commanded by Drake. Due to the stormy weather and Nami's exceptional navigational skills, the ship sails away unscathed, leaving the Marine pursuant behind. Luffy and the crew reach a town on Hannibal Island. Inside a pirate-filled bar, they find out there's a great but very dangerous opportunity through a mysterious door in the bar. As the crew enters the mysterious door, they're surprised to see it's the opening to a large tunnel. Inside, they find themselves in a large cave filled with pirates, the site of the Dead End Race, a very dangerous anything-goes sailing competition where the winner can win up to 300 million berries. The crew is introduced to the favorites to win that year, two giants, Bobby and Pogo, a fishman and former rival of Arlong, Willie, and the favorited to win, Gaspard, a former marine general who deserted after killing his crew. While Nami registers the crew for the race, Luffy gets involved in a fight against Gaspard's crew along with an infamous bounty hunter by the name of Shiraiya Baskud, meeting Gaspard himself, which of course ends on bad terms. The next morning, Luffy and the crew set sail along with many other pirate ships for the parade start, which involves sailing off a waterfall, fighting off other pirates, and navigating sharp turns. Before even reaching the ocean, several pirate crews are wrecked. Luckily, the Straw Hats manage. However, while checking the ship, they find a stowaway, a kid by the name of Anaguma, who's come to kill them for the bounty though find that's impossible after witnessing the crew's strength and power and thus sails along with them for the race. After a few more encounters, one involving the pirate ship of Bigelow the Hangman and Sea Kings, Luffy and the Straw Hats arrive at Parsha, the supposed finish line of the race. However, it turns out to be a marine stronghold that quickly sinks any incoming pirate ships. Luffy realizes Gaspard rigged the race, and the crew manages to escape the stronghold and track down Gaspard's ship using Chopper's nose. Meanwhile, on board Gaspard's ship, the Salamander Shuraya, the bounty hunter from earlier, tries to attack Gaspard but barely defeats his right-hand man, Needless. Just when Gaspard is about to finish Shuraya off, the Straw Hats arrive on the scene, and Luffy makes his way on board Gaspard's ship, taking down his crew, angered about what the former Marine did. Shiraiya tries to intervene, but Luffy knocks him out to keep him from getting in the way. Luffy and Gaspard proceed to fight. Luffy's fight with Gaspard is not going well, but Sanji realizes something and gives Luffy sacks of flour before rejoining the other Straw Hats. When Anaguma realized that his grandpa is still on Gaspard's ship, he begs the Straw Hats to go back, but Zoro knocks him out and reveals that Anaguma is actually a girl. Meanwhile, back in the ship, Grandpa overloads the boiler, causing it to explode and sink the ship. Luffy manages to stay on the sinking remains, as does Gaspard, who shows Luffy that a cyclone is closing in on their position, and that whoever wins can escape the ship and storm via lifeboats. The two strike one another, with Luffy actually managing to hit him due to the counter effects of the flower on Gaspard's syrup powers. Luffy then throws the remaining flower sack at Gaspard, coating him with it, and proceeds to pound him and sends him flying into the cyclone. Luffy then collapses from exhaustion, but is saved by Anaguma's grandpa along with Shiraya. 
As they head for the nearby island, Grandpa reveals that Anaguma was adopted and her real name is Adele Bascud, Shiraya's little sister whom he thought was dead. Despite the awkward reuniting, the two come to accept each other. The Straw Hats close in on the real Parsha as the winners of the race, but the Marine ships suddenly appear and go after them, forcing them to flee from the island and forfeit their prize money. They let Adele, Shiraya, and Grandpa off, then wish them goodbye individually before sailing off with the Marines on their tail. Despite not getting the prize money, the Straw Hats continue on for their next big adventure. Sky Island Saga, Ruluka Island Arc Luffy and the Straw Hats are being chased by a small fleet of Marine ships, led by Major Pasqua and Isoka. Luffy and his crew barely escape when the Marine's Major accidentally sinks one of his own ships. The crew then make their way towards an island named Ruluka. They soon meet Flip, the son of the mayor and the commander of a troop who collects taxes from the people of Ruluka, the collection party, and they find out the island is in fact ruled by a former pilot, Mayor Wetton that is overtaxing the people. Luffy, Usopp, and Robin also meet Professor Henzo, who's doing research on something called the Rainbow Mist, sponsored by the Scrupulous Wetton. Suddenly, a huge galleon, the Tarielishin, appeared in the harbor, and Luffy and the others go explore it, and it turns out to be the pirate ship of the Wetton Pirates. When some of the mist shows up, Henzo borrows the Going Merry, and Luffy, Usopp, Robin, Henzo, and Zoro, who was sleeping on the ship, go inside it. Though, Zoro was already in there. The inside of the Rainbow Mist is full of wrecked ships and treasure, and is guarded by five kids. The kids are actually friends of Henzo's that got lost in the mist over 50 years ago, along with the Tarielishin and Ian, a member of, then, the Wetton Pirates. Henzo states that the flow of time is different inside the Rainbow Mist, and the space is distorted, so Luffy and the others try to find a way out of the ship graveyard. Finally, Flip communicates with Henzo with a Den Den Mushi, and the company realizes that they're still connected with the outside world. Then, Luffy accidentally propels himself and Rapa Nui, one of the kids, to the end of the mist. The mayor, though, uses the Rainbow Tower to make a bridge to the Rainbow Mist and launches an attack inside of it, along with Lake, the son of Flip, and his grandson. Luffy goes back to the Rainbow Mist by throwing himself and Rapa Nui through the Rainbow Tower. There he fights Wetton, but the mayor manages to escape and blows the Rainbow Tower away. Luffy and the others, though, escape the Rainbow Mist on board the Going Merry, with the help of Rapa Nui and the other kids who stayed behind to blow up a marine ship and give the Going Merry a boost to escape with the explosion. Outside, the mayor gets arrested by a bunch of powerful marines that turn out to be older version of Henzo's friends, who were thrown 50 years into the past by the Rainbow Mist's collapse. The marines let Luffy and the Straw Hats go, and the crew departs onward towards their next adventure. Sky Island Saga, Jaya Arc Not long after Luffy and the Straw Hats left Alabasta, a massive ship fell from the sky and into the sea. From Nico Robin and a brief search of the sinking ship, which resulted in a map, Luffy and his crew learned that the ship fell from an island in the sky called Skypea. Needing more info on the matter, Luffy and his crew decide to explore more of the ship. Using special diving suits created by Usopp, Luffy along with Zoro and Sanji explore the sunken ship. As they explore the ship and find new things, their search is cut short as the ship is suddenly clamped and filled with air, and a bunch of other people appear. After taking care of the intruders within the newly created air pocket, the three encountered a monkey-like person bursting into the room. Although Luffy and the stranger initially got along, they unfortunately got on bad terms when they found out that they were after the same thing. Fortunately, with thanks from his two crewmates, Luffy escaped from Asira and a giant turtle that ate the ship at the same time. As Luffy and the others were about to deal with this new foe, they suddenly witnessed something that completely scared them, the shadowy silhouettes of creatures several times larger than regular giants. After escaping the creatures and getting rid of Masira, who accidentally tagged along, Luffy and his crew learned of Jaya from an eternal pose that Robin stole from the guy. Needing info on how to get to Skypea, Luffy and his crew sail for Jaya. Arriving at Jaya at the port of Mock Town, Luffy and his crew found the place that they landed on was a lawless town filled with pirates. Wanting to explore the town as well as get information, Luffy along with Zoro and Nami went offshore into town. With a promise not to fight while in town to Nami, the three explored the place and encountered several of the inhabitants. They eventually end up in a bar, wherein Luffy has a small argument with another customer. Though the incident ended without a hitch, Luffy and his companions encountered a much more serious one. Luffy and his companions soon encounter in the bar Bellamy and his crew, with the intention of seeing if Luffy was worthy of joining his new age of pirates. However, upon learning that Luffy and his crew wanted to go to Sky Island, Bellamy along with the rest of the bar started ridiculing them and the notion of dreams such as Sky Island. Though the situation got worse with Luffy and Zoro taking hints from Bellamy's crew, they however refused to fight. As the two were dragged out by a frustrated Nami, the three were congratulated and encouraged by the pirate that Luffy had argued with earlier. 
Though the man assured them that dreams would never die, Luffy and Zoro, however, sense something up with him and the people that are apparently associated with him. Returning to Going Merry, Luffy and the others soon learn that while their search was unproductive, Robin's was successful. Learning that a man by the name of Mont Blanc Cricket might know something, they headed off to the other side of Jaya. After escaping a brief encounter with Masira's brother, Shoujo, Luffy and his crew reached Cricket's home. There, they had a brief misunderstanding with Cricket, who they found out apparently suffered from decompression sickness. However, upon helping Cricket and clearing things with him, Luffy and his crew were able to get better acquainted with the former pirate. For helping Cricket, they were also able to reconcile with Cricket's protégés Masura and Shoujo. As they explained their problem and got acquainted, Luffy and his crew learned of Cricket's past and his ancestor. Showing interest in Cricket's dream, Luffy and his crew convinced Cricket to help them out in getting to Skypea. Luffy and his crew, however, found out that they needed an important thing to aid them, the South Bird. This bird, as explained to them by Cricket, was needed to find a knock-up stream needed to help them get to Skypea. Having been told this, Luffy and the crew quickly went to search for the bird, splitting up into various groups. Though they encountered all sorts of obstacles and antics while searching, they were able to catch one in the end thanks to Robin. With the captured bird, they went back to Cricket's. Upon returning, however, they discovered the horrid aftermath of an incident that happened when they were away. Cricket and his protégés were defeated and had been robbed by Bellamy and his crew. Spurred on by this, Luffy decided to go after Bellamy and get his wounded friend's gold back. At Mock Town, Luffy was engaged by Bellamy, who wanted to prove once and for all to those around him that Luffy and Cricket's dreams were nothing. Despite Bellamy's over-the-top display of his Devil Fruit ability, Luffy, however, defeated the arrogant pirate with a single, normal punch. Having completely obliterated Bellamy in front of his crew and the other pirates, Luffy was able to retrieve Cricket's gold without any further trouble. As the morning of the next day came, Luffy arrived back at Cricket's house. There, he saw the newly modified Going Merry as he gave Cricket's gold back. With the new modifications for the trip up to Skypea and the South Bird, Luffy and crew set sail with the ships of Masura and Shoujo escorting them. As they were leaving, Luffy and his crew were cheered on by Cricket's final words of encouragement. With that, Luffy and the crew sailed off to where they would ride a knock-up stream. After a long wait out on the sea, the weather and sea started to show signs of a stream. As Luffy and his crew were preparing themselves for the journey to Skypea, they suddenly encountered the ship and crew of the pirate that Luffy fought with in the bar. From this encounter, the crew learned of Luffy and Zoro's new bounties, for which the pirate planned on collecting. The encounter, however, was brief as the knock-up stream started. With the stream shooting the Going Merry into the sky, Luffy and his crew set forth to new adventure, along with the added side effect of uh, escaping the pursuing pirate. Sky Island Saga, Skypea Arc. The crew ended up floating on a cloud after passing through it, and as they took in their surroundings, Usopp decided to take a swim in the clouds. When he did not resurface, the Straw Hats realized he was falling all the way to the Blue Sea, and Luffy quickly stretched his arm down to try to save him. Robin sprouted eyes on Luffy's arm, allowing her to see where Usopp was and generate arms off of Luffy's to grab him. When Luffy pulled Usopp back up, a giant balloon-like octopus followed them, though Zoro easily dealt with it. As the crew recovered from this experience, they were suddenly assaulted by a masked gorilla warrior who landed powerful blows on Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji. However, the Knight of the Sky, Ganfal, then came flying in on his bird horse Pierre and fought off the warrior before introducing himself to the Straw Hats. After learning about what the Straw Hats did to get here, Ganfal gifted them a free whistle to call him should they be attacked by someone again, and then departed. With the crew unsure as to how to keep sailing upward to the log pose's destination, Luffy tried to blow the whistle, but was stopped by Nami. The crew then came across a cloud waterfall, and Luffy found that the clouds around it were hard enough to stand and bounce on. Upon climbing up the bouncy cloud, Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper found that behind the waterfall was a path. At the end of the path, the Straw Hats came to Heaven's Gate, where the gatekeeper Amazon charged them one billion extols for entry. The Straw Hats only had Barry and were unsure of how to convert it, but Amazon told them that they could pass through without paying. When they did, the Going Merry was suddenly seized by Speedy Shrimp, which took it and the Straw Hats on a winding path to the country of Skypea up above. Upon reaching the sea at the end of the path, the Straw Hats found themselves at the coast of Angel Island, a place founded on top of the clouds, and Luffy immediately disembarked to explore it. As Luffy examined the various elements on the island, the Straw Hats met a young native girl named Konis, as well as her father, Pagaya. Luffy rode Pagaya's waver around the sea, but ended up losing control and falling in, forcing Zoro and Sanji to rescue him. Nami then tried out the waver and was much better at it, and Pagaya and Konis took the rest of the Straw Hats to their home. There, Konis explained the abilities of Dials, which powered wavers among other things. 
At that point, Nami was no longer in sight, and Konus became worried that she had wandered over to the upper yard, the home of Skypea's god, Eno, which was forbidden for all to enter. This made Luffy very interested in it, and the crew decided to go and rescue Nami if she was in any trouble. The group went back down to the coast, and before the Straw Hats set off, Pagaya examined their old waiver. Suddenly, McKinley and the White Berets came marching in and confronted Luffy to charge him and the Straw Hats for illegal entry. They explained the punishment was just a fine of ten times the original entry fee, but after learning the value of Extols compared to Barry, the crew realized that it would be an exorbitant amount. Nami then returned to the coast on Pagaya's waiver, and after learning about the charges, she hit McKinley with the waiver in anger. Because of this, McKinley increased the charges against the Straw Hats to be punished by execution by cloud drifting, and Luffy confronted the White Berets with the intention of fighting. After dodging the sky arrows they shot, Luffy pulled against a palm tree and spun himself around, allowing him to wildly attack the force with punches and kicks and take out most of them at once. Zoro and Sanji came ashore to finish the job, and McKinley then proclaimed that due to their crimes, the Straw Hats would be judged by God's priests themselves. With this news, the Straw Hats bid farewell to Konus and Pagaya, and prepared to try to leave Skypea through Cloud End to the best of their ability. However, as Luffy, Usopp, and Sanji went inside the duo's house to get food, a Super Express Speedy Shrimp then arrived and carried off the Mary. Pagaya revealed to the trio that their crewmates were being taken to the sacrificial altar in the Upper Yard, where they would be held as hostages. It would be up to the trio to take the Milky Road to Upper Yard and face the trials over there in order to rescue the rest of the crew. Konus took Luffy, Usopp, and Sanji down Lovely Street to the port, where she gave them her small boat, Karasumaru. Luffy noticed that Konus had been pale and shaking since they had left her house and asked if she was scared. After some hesitation, Konus broke down and revealed that she was the one who called the speedy shrimp that took away their crewmates, as failing to turn in criminals was punishable by death. Luffy, Usopp, and Sanji were not angry at her for doing this, instead wondering why she risked her life to reveal it to them. Suddenly, sparks rose in the air, and Luffy quickly grabbed Konus and jumped away right as Enel struck the spot where Konus was standing with a giant thunderbolt. The attack left a gaping hole in the port that Luffy and Konus fell into, but luckily, Ganfal came flying in to save them. Ganfal took Konus away to a safe area as Luffy, Usopp, and Sanji set sail for Upper Yard. As the trio entered the heavily forested place, they quickly had to contend with large swiping blades threatening to pulverize them, as well as a giant sky lamprey eel. After making it past those obstacles, they arrived at four gateways, each one leading to a different ordeal. Luffy wanted to go to the Ordeal of Balls since it sounded like the most fun, hmm, and so the trio went through that gate. After being dropped off a cliff, they landed back on the Milky Road and found themselves surrounded by large floating balls made of island cloud. However, when playing with one of the balls, Luffy and Usopp were assaulted by a snake that burst out of it, and Sanji tried hitting away an incoming ball only for it to explode. The trio were then confronted by Satori, one of Anil's four priests who introduced them to his surprise balls, and that they had to defeat him to continue on to the sacrificial altar. Luffy attempted to punch Satori, but the priests easily dodged him before striking him with an impact dial, which unleashed a powerful blow against him that caused internal damage. Satori sent Luffy, Sanji, and Usopp off the Karasumaru with his impact dial strikes and revealed that the boat would keep moving and leave them behind in his forest if they didn't defeat him in time. Luffy aimed another punch at Satori, but the priest grabbed his arm after dodging it and slammed him into a tree. Luffy then tried attacking Satori with Gomu Gomu no Gatling Gun, but this time failed to hit Satori and instead struck several surprise balls, causing the Straw Hats to be assaulted by their contents. Luffy was sent falling towards one of the Cloud Rivers and saved himself by grabbing a vine, though ended up having fun swinging on it and becoming distracted. Eventually, Sanji got him off the vine and beat him up, but Satori then struck Sanji with an impact dial. Satori proceeded to overwhelm the entire trio before assaulting them with his ball dragon, which would cause a massive chain reaction if a particular ball in its chain was set off. However, Luffy found the string Satori was using to control the dragon and broke it. Satori responded by pulling the rope to bring Luffy to him. However, Luffy didn't let go of the ball dragon and sent it crashing into Satori. The priest managed to avoid the massive explosion, but Luffy avoided it as well by hanging onto his back. Luffy then wrapped his arms around Satori's body, rendering him immobile and preventing him from dodging their attacks, allowing Sanji to give Satori a powerful kick to the head and defeat him. Immediately afterward, Usopp called to Luffy and Sanji that he had found the Karasumaru and told them to come to him quickly. Once they did, Usopp shot a rope from his belt that successfully wrapped around the boat and pulled them up to it, but they ended up hitting several trees on the way up. As the Karasumaru sailed out of the forest, the trio lay dazed on it. Sometime later, Luffy, Usopp, and Sanji sailed through a field dotted with skulls. 
A group of Shandia gorillas came flying past them, and their leader, Wiper, fired a bazooka shot at the trio. Luffy deflected it with Gomu Gomu no Fusen, and Wiper chose not to attack further, but warned the Straw Hats that he would treat them like Enel would if they caused trouble on the island. The trio continued sailing and made it to the sacrificial altar by sunset, where they reunited with the rest of the crew. After checking on the injured Gonfall, the Straw Hats decided to camp out on the upper yard for the night. After setting up the campsite, the crew talked about their discovery that the lost city of gold that Nolan was looking for was here on the upper yard and decided to hunt for the gold the next day. The crew then gathered food and supplies, and Luffy was put in charge of overseeing the boiling of water for drinking. As the Straw Hats ate some stew, they talked about clues to finding the city from Nolan's logbook. Afterwards, Robin said the crew should put out the fire to avoid attracting attention from enemies, but Luffy and Usopp opposed this. Despite Robin and Nami's warnings, the crew built a giant bonfire and danced around it before going to bed. The next morning, Usopp showed the crew that repairs to the Mary somehow happened overnight, which he claimed to be the work of a spirit. The crew then split into two teams to head to the Lost City, with Luffy, Zoro, Chopper, and Robin forming the Explore team that would head to the city on foot. The quartet's expedition had just started when they ran into a giant snake named Nola. Luffy told the group to run away from it, and they became scattered as the snake attempted to attack them with its poisonous fangs. Luffy tried to lure Nola toward him, and ended up being separated from the rest of the group. He remembered the direction to go south, but he had no idea which way south was, and went in a straight line southwest. He became interested upon hearing the bleeding of what sounded like a goat, and when a Shandia warrior tried to ambush him, Luffy quickly beat the warrior aside, being annoyed that he wasn't a goat. Luffy then ran into Wiper, who asked him what he was doing in the Upper Yard still. Wiper told Luffy that Upper Yard belonged to his people, the Shandia, and Luffy accepted this and walked off. However, Wiper had had enough of Luffy, and so decided to eliminate him, and Luffy was very willing to fight back. Wiper shot Luffy with eight bazooka shots, all of which Luffy deflected. Wiper then changed his strategy and fired a stream of natural gas at Luffy before using his burn bazooka to create disintegrating white flames. Luffy managed to dodge the sudden burst of fire and traded blows with Wiper in midair. Wiper then readied another burn bazooka strike against him, and Luffy responded by attacking him with Gomu Gomu no bazooka. The two's attacks hit each other simultaneously, causing a notable amount of injury to both of them. Wiper then called out to Luffy to see if he was still alive, and Luffy responded, but he was then suddenly eaten by Nola and fell through its insides before landing among some ruins. Thinking he was inside a cave, Luffy examined the treasures in the ruins while walking further down Nola's stomach. He came to a dead end and tried striking it with Gomu Gomu no Bazooka to see if there was a secret door, which caused Nola to spin around. Nola ate some sea clouds, which almost drowned Luffy, and the pirate continued hitting the walls of its stomach, which caused the snake to rampage through Upper Yard in pain. Nola's movements while fighting in the upper ruins of Shandora caused Luffy to constantly fall through its stomach as it repositioned, leaving him aghast as to what kind of cave this was. Luffy then attempted to dig his way out of the stomach, causing Nola to laugh. However, he was then joined by Nami, Gonfall, Pierre, and Isa after they had been eaten by Nola, and they revealed to him that this cave was in fact the snake's stomach. Nami then decided to ride her waver out of the snake through its mouth, and Luffy hung onto the back of the waver while Isa hung onto him. However, the exhaust fumes of the waver blew Luffy and Isa off of it, and they fell back down into Nola's stomach. However, Pierre quickly returned to rescue them. Nola was knocked unconscious by a thunderbolt from Enel, and Luffy, Isa, and Pierre traveled up to its head. Luffy ended up behind its left eye and opened its eyelid, but was quickly guided down to its mouth. They jarred the snake's mouth open and fell to the ground below, where they found themselves in Shandora, the legendary city of gold. However, Luffy and Isa then found Zoro, Chopper, Robin, Gonfall, and Wiper laying unconscious next to a giant hole in the ground. A barely conscious Robin told Luffy that Enel had done this and was plotting to destroy all of Skypea and he had taken Nami away to an unknown place. Robin believed that Enel would go to the fabled Golden Bell first, and when Isa sensed the presence of two people with her mantra, Luffy told the young girl to take him there. Isa guided Luffy to a cave near the city ruins, and Luffy confronted Enel, who was with Nami on the giant ship Ark Maxim. Luffy pulled himself up to the ship's deck, and Enel struck him with a mighty thunderbolt. However, due to Luffy's body being made of rubber, a natural insulator to lightning, the attack had no effect on him. Enel was left stunned, and Luffy charged towards him, successfully punching Skypea's god in the stomach as his rubber body bypassed Enel's Logia defenses. When Enel got up from the attack, Luffy tried attacking him again, but the god used his mantra to dodge Luffy's attacks and hit the pirate with his staff. Enel used his electricity to reshape his staff into a trident, and Luffy struggled to avoid being stabbed by it. 
After managing to dodge one of Enel's attacks in mid-air, Luffy was able to kick him to the floor. However, Enel was able to grab Luffy's arms on his follow-up attack and slam him into the floor as well, and he proceeded to activate the Arc Maxim to bring it up into the air. Luffy watched in anger as Enel used the Maxim to generate a giant thundercloud he called the Death Pia to wreak destruction on Sky Pia, it's very creative naming. In an attempt to work around Enel's mantra, Luffy shut off his mind and dodged Enel's strikes purely on reflex, though quickly went back to normal since he couldn't attack him in that diminished mental state. Luffy then got another idea and ran towards Enel's throne chamber, which was surrounded by a curved wall. He threw rapid punches at the wall, and those punches ricocheted back and struck Enel, who could not anticipate their randomness. With Enel reeling from those attacks, he was powerless to stop Luffy from pummeling him with direct attacks. Luffy watched as the injured Enel slowly got up and cursed him for messing with his plans, but as Luffy moved to attack him further, Enel quickly responded by reshaping the gold from the wall behind him and forming it into a giant ball around Luffy's right forearm. With Luffy unable to pull his arm out, Enel kicked the ball and sent it rolling off the edge of the Maxim. Luffy tried holding onto the ledge, but Enel sent him falling to the ground far below with his staff. Issa and Pierre tried to fly in to rescue Luffy, but Enel attacked them with a lightning bolt as well. The three of them fell down into a chasm, where Luffy had rubble fall on him, though he remained unharmed. After pulling himself out, he prepared to follow the Ark Maxim to the place where the Golden Bell was. Issa took Luffy to the giant beanstalk, Giant Jack, which the Ark Maxim was circling near high above. And Robin was there, revealing that the Golden Bell was up at the top of it. Luffy then ran up Giant Jack with his golden ball in tow, intent on freeing Nami, Usopp, and Sanji, and fighting Enel. Once he made it to the top of Giant Jack, Luffy was noticed by Enel, who fired a lightning bolt to break off the top of the beanstalk and send Luffy falling. Luffy was able to grab back onto Giant Jack and pull himself onto the highest cloud platform on it, and right then he was suddenly struck by Nami, who had rowed her waver up Giant Jack to fetch him. After watching Enel destroy all of Angel Island with a giant thundercloud called Raigo, Nami told Luffy that Usopp and Sanji had escaped the Ark Maxim and that he needed to go back to the Going Merry with her so they could escape as well. However, Luffy told her that he needed to defeat Enel and ring the Golden Bell for the sake of Cricket, in order to show him that the City of Gold that Nolan wrote about was indeed real. Luffy tried grabbing onto the Ark Maxim, but Enel easily kicked his hand off, and Enel responded to Luffy's ensuing attempts by striking him with lightning bolts. Luffy then got the idea to write a message on a giant leaf to tell the people at Giant Jack's base to cut down the beanstalk so it would fall westward toward the Maxim. Luffy was surprised to see that Nami was sticking with him, and Nami told him that he needed her to pilot the waver the rest of the way up, and so she was willing to take that risk. Zoro, Nola, and Wiper were able to successfully tip Giant Jack toward the west, and Nami drove the waver up the beanstalk as fast as it would go while Luffy held onto her from behind. As the duo shot off the beanstalk and flew toward the Maxim, Enel brought down an even larger Raigo to destroy all of Skypea. To Nami's shock, Luffy jumped off the waver directly into the Raigo, and while inside of it, Luffy threw his golden ball around in every possible direction. The ball conducted the electricity inside the giant thunder sphere, and so Luffy was able to completely disperse the Raigo and save Skypea. With the Maxim and the Golden Bell now in his sights, Luffy stretched back his right arm and twisted it around. Enel responded by fully transforming into lightning, into a shape resembling a larger version of his own body. Though Luffy was still able to bypass his transformation and land blows on him. However, Enel was able to reach around Luffy with an arm of lightning and stab him in the back with his trident. Luffy's only options were to either let the trident pierce him further, or fall all the way down to Skypea, and he decided to let go and fall. However, he then grabbed onto a small piece of island cloud near the Maxim and pulled himself back up. Luffy reared back and twisted his right arm again and sent the golden ball crashing into Enel's giant body, smashing him against the golden bell. Luffy cried out for the golden bell to ring, and as it did so, Enel's transformation deactivated, and the god was defeated. Luffy fell down along with Enel, the Maxim, and the Bell, but landed on a small piece of island cloud where Nami was. Luffy and Nami jumped back down to Upper Yard, with Luffy using Gomu Gomu no Fusion to cushion their fall. They then came across the priest's storehouse and took the large amounts of food from inside it before arriving at Shandora and reuniting with the rest of the crew. Night fell as the crew ate the priest's food, and they then took part in a large party with the Skypeans and Shandia. The party lasted for several days, and one night when everyone was sleeping, Luffy woke up the crew and told them they should steal the city's treasure and run away. The next morning, Luffy took some of the crew inside the sleeping Nola's stomach, where they took the treasures from the ruins that the snake had eaten. The crew then anxiously awaited for Robin to arrive so they could depart without being caught. 
and when Robin came with several Skypeans behind her, the crew quickly ran away with their stolen treasure, not realizing the citizens had come to give them an even greater amount. The Straw Hats sailed to Cloud End, where they bid farewell to Conus and Pagaya. They were then sent off a ledge and fell straight down, but Conus called a balloon octopus which grabbed the Mary and inflated itself, giving the crew a controlled descent into the Blue Sea. Water 7 Saga Long Ring Long Land Arc Upon returning from Skypea to the Blue Sea, Luffy and his crew had no time to rest as they encountered a giant wave created by some sea monkeys. After the brief incident, Luffy and his crew rested and assessed the good wealth they obtained from their Sky Island adventure. As Luffy discussed with his crew, they all agreed that they would use the treasure to help fix the travel-worn Going Merry and get a shipwright to help maintain it. After encountering the Sea Monkeys once again and a curious pirate ship with no sails or crew, Luffy and his crew reached the next island in their journey. As Luffy, along with Usopp and Chopper, decided to explore the island, they noticed that the animals and plant life were all very long in appearance. As Luffy and his two companions explored the island more, they encountered a nomad named Tonjin, who had been stuck on his stilts for ten long years. After getting acquainted with the old man and reuniting him with his horse Shelly, Luffy and his companions felt they had done some small accomplishment. However, in the midst of their enjoyment, Shelly was suddenly shot, learning immediately that the shot was fired by the pirate Foxy who was nearby. Luffy momentarily got angry at this foe, but before Luffy could fight Foxy, he was suddenly challenged to an official Davy Back fight. From Usopp, Luffy learned that this sudden challenge was a set of three games between pirate crews in which the crew members were all at stake. Despite Usopp's warnings, however, and much to the dismay of the rest of the crew, Luffy accepted the challenge from Foxy and his crew to hold the Davy back fight on Long Ring Long Land. What happened next was a festival-like event set up by the Foxy Pirates in lieu of the Davy Back games. After the formalities of beginning the games, Luffy and his crew decided who would participate in which game. Taking the final and most climactic game, Combat, Luffy awaited for his turn as he watched the rest of his crew participate in the other games. The first two games of the Davy Back fight proved to be both surprising and emotional for Luffy and his crew. In the first game, Donut Race, they witnessed Foxy and his crew's cheating tricks and Foxy's exploit of his devil fruit powers of the Noro Noro no Mi. Due to these, Luffy lost Chopper to Foxy. Fortunately, Luffy was able to win Chopper back as his crew won the second game, Groggy Ring, despite the gigantic odds stacked against them. After watching these two grueling games, Luffy was pumped up for his turn in the final game. With the third game approaching, Luffy, with help from Usopp, decided to dress appropriately for the match. Donning an afro and boxing outfit, Luffy was ready to face off against the sly Foxy aboard his ship, the Sexy Foxy. Throughout the whole match, Luffy was constantly tricked by his smarter opponent as they battled all around the ship. With Foxy's tricks and devil fruit powers, it seemed like Luffy would lose. Despite this, Luffy persevered to not lose one of his crew forever. In the climax of the battle, Luffy was able to thwart Foxy by using a mirror shard obtained from the battle to reflect Foxy's powers back to himself. Having slowed Foxy down, Luffy delivered the final blow and won the game. After a lot of rest, Luffy wakes up being told he did indeed win the fight. Foxy comes to congratulate Luffy on how he fought in the match, giving a handshake gesture, then attempting to throw him overboard, forgetting his arm is rubber. As Luffy won, he gets to choose a crew member from the Foxy Pirates, but instead chooses their flag. But as their sail is their flag, Luffy opts to redesign the flag, then give it back. Luffy's poorly drawn Jolly Roger is given to them, officially ending the Davy back fight. Although obviously grateful, Foxy vows revenge on Luffy for losing the match. The Straw Hats return to Tonjit, giving him the Foxy Pirate's old flag as a sign of their defeat. Chopper uses it as a bandage for Shelly the horse. Just as Luffy and his crew were done with dealing with the matter with Foxy and his pirates, they soon came across another one. Sleeping beside Tonjit's house was Admiral Aokiji. Initially, Aokiji was non-hostile to Luffy and his crew, despite him being a marine and causing Luffy some fear when he told him that he knew his grandfather. Aokiji even helped Tonjit in finding a way to get back to the rest of the old man's nomad clan with his Hiei Hiei no Mi. However, when hostilities began between Aokiji and Nico Robin, Luffy and his crew faced off against this new foe. Despite their best efforts, Luffy and those who fought alongside him against Aokiji were utterly defeated. Fortunately, however, the Admiral simply left a frozen Luffy in defeat, but with a warning to be wary with Nico Robin. Water 7 Saga Water 7 Arc Seven days after the encounter with Aokiji, Luffy had recovered and demonstrated his new frozen pose as his crew sailed to their next destination. They then encountered the giant frog Yokozuna and chased after him, with Luffy wanting to eat him. 
However, they were forced to turn back after getting caught in the path of the sea train, and Luffy watched as Yokozuna unsuccessfully tried to attack it. The crew went into the shift station nearby and met Kokoro and her granddaughter Chimney, and Kokoro told them that their next destination, Water 7, was home to the world's best carpenters. Luffy grew excited, hoping to find a carpenter crewmate there. Kokoro gave them a map and a letter of recommendation, telling them to find a man named Iceberg. As they continued sailing toward Water 7, Luffy talked with his crewmates about what they wanted their carpenter to be like. Upon reaching the island, the crew was forced to dock at a small peninsula in the back, and they marveled at its architecture. Nami forced Luffy and Usopp to go with her to meet Iceberg. They headed to the city center to exchange their gold for money, and Luffy bought Yagara bulls to take them there. The trio got 300 million berry for their gold and headed to the shipyard. There, they met the carpenter Kaku of the Galley Law Company, who revealed that Iceberg was the mayor of Water 7. To make their meeting with him go faster, Kaku went to check on the Mary himself. The trio then met Iceberg, who to their surprise acted very irresponsibly, although his secretary, Khalifa, attacked them when they pointed it out. Iceberg then offered to give them a tour of the shipyard. The Frankie family suddenly swooped in and stole the Straw Hat's money, but Polly took them out, and Rob Lucci forced Polly to give the crew their money back. Luffy was awestruck when Iceberg took them inside the shipyard's Dock 1 and unsuccessfully tried to get him to join his crew. Kaku then returned to the shipyard, and he broke the news that the Going Merry was damaged beyond repair and could not sail any further. Luffy refused to believe that they would need to find a replacement ship, but the workers gave him no option to reconsider. Luffy and Nami then realized that the contents of their suitcases were empty, and overheard Peepli Lulu reveal that he had seen Usopp, whom he mistook for Kaku, with the Frankie family, causing Luffy to immediately run off to find his crewmate. While looking for Usopp, Luffy accidentally fell in a canal, where he was found and rescued by Zoro, Sanji, and Chopper. They soon found a heavily beaten Usopp in the clearing between the city and the Frankie house, and they headed toward the Frankie house to teach the Frankie family a lesson. Upon entering the house, the four of them immediately started attacking and overwhelming the Frankie family, not stopping even when they revealed that their boss, Frankie, had gone to spend the stolen money. By the end of the battle, the entire Frankie house was destroyed, and as the Straw Hats were thinking about what to do next, Luffy announced that he had decided for the crew to bid farewell to the Going Merry. The group took Usopp back to the Merry, and after he regained consciousness, Luffy told him about his decision to look for a new ship. Usopp refused to believe what the Carpenters had said, but Luffy stood firm in his decision as their argument grew more heated. Usopp then decided to leave the crew and challenged Luffy to a duel for the Mary. The time of the duel was set for 10pm, and Luffy laid around until then. Luffy and Usopp then confronted each other on the peninsula at the appointed time, and as Luffy went on the offensive, Usopp managed to stop him by pretending to be injured. This allowed Usopp to barrage Luffy with a variety of long-range attacks, culminating in a massive gas explosion that dealt some injuries to Luffy. Luffy was able to punch Usopp in the face, but Usopp countered his next attack with an impact dial, which he redirected at Luffy. However, the recoil of the dial left Usopp unable to defend against Luffy's next attack, which defeated him. Luffy then bid farewell to Usopp, saying the former Straw Hat could do whatever he wished with the Mary as he tearfully headed back towards his crew. The Straw Hats, minus a missing Robin, left the Going Merry for good and stayed the night at the inn. The next morning, Luffy heard from Nami that Iceberg had been shot, and the two of them took a Yagara bull to go see him. They were met by a crowd as they reached Dock 1, and Frankie then arrived to confront Luffy for attacking his family. Frankie breathed fire at Luffy and Nami before jumping into the water and attacking their boat. He then punched Luffy by detaching his arm, revealing that he was a cyborg. Luffy and Frankie continued fighting furiously in the dock until they were interrupted by Polly, Kaku, Luchi, Peepli, Lulu, and Tilestone. Polly, Lulu, and Luchi attacked and overpowered Luffy, with Polly revealing that the Straw Hats were the main suspects in the attack on Iceberg, as Robin was one of the two attackers he had seen. Luffy refused to believe that Robin had done this and demanded to speak with Iceberg, but the Galley Law workers stood against him as the townspeople subdued Nami. Luffy attempted to escape from the workers as they pulled out sharp and explosive weapons to attack him, but he was quickly cornered and shot by Tilestone's bazooka. However, Frankie then unleashed a massive attack on Dock 1, allowing Luffy to escape with Nami. Luffy and Nami then managed to reach Galila headquarters where Iceberg resided, and Luffy pulled himself in through the window. As he ran through the building, Khalifa called out to him and let him enter Iceberg's room. There, Iceberg demanded that Luffy bring Robin to speak with him. Luffy replied that he was unable to, and he was forced to escape outside as Iceberg shot at him. Luffy and Nami escaped to the outskirts of town and reunited with Zoro, but they were soon forced to hide from the citizens hunting them. 
Chopper then found them and revealed that Robin had told him and Sanji that she had framed them for the attack on Iceberg and would be leaving forever, shocking them. Zoro deduced that Robin and her new mysterious cohorts would likely try to kill Iceberg that night, and Luffy decided to go back to Galila headquarters to confront her and find out the truth. As night fell, Luffy, Zoro, Nami, and Chopper hid in a tree near headquarters looking for Robin to make her move. They eventually saw a massive explosion be unleashed in front of the building, and Luffy immediately headed towards it. But he was blown into a crevice in another building, but escaped it and pulled himself toward headquarters. Luffy partially broke into a room where Polly was with two masked men, and he recognized the masked men as enemies, telling them to give Robin back. The masked men then attacked and subdued him, binding him and Polly to the ground before leaving. Luffy eventually managed to squeeze out of his bindings and freed Polly of his before the two of them raced towards Iceberg's room. After initially breaking into the wrong room, Luffy and Polly reached Iceberg's room at the same time as Zoro, Nami, and Chopper. There, they found Robin with Luchi, Kaku, Khalifa, and the bartender Bluno, who were undercover assassins from the world government agency CP9. Luffy intervened when Luchi started attacking Polly, but Luchi used his Rokushiki techniques to overwhelm him. Robin then told her former crewmates that she was pursuing a goal that she could not reach with them. Luchi told the Straw Hats, Iceberg, and Polly that the mansion would soon go up in flames, but he and his comrades remained in the room to prevent them from escaping. Luffy tried to get to Robin, only for agents to overwhelm him with their Rokushiki techniques. As Robin headed to the window, Luffy tried running toward her again, only to be stopped and tossed aside by Luchi as she departed. With the fire starting, Luchi decided to show Luffy's group the true power of his devil fruit, the Neko Neko no Mi, Model Leopard. Luchi unleashed a powered-up Renkyaku attack that caused the building to start collapsing, and Luffy attacked the agent when he confronted Polly and Iceberg. However, Luchi pierced through Luffy's body with a claw-enhanced Shigan before throwing him out of the building, sending him flying far away. Luffy flew into a narrow gap between two buildings where he became stuck. A while later, he heard Nami calling out to him from a nearby building, and Nami revealed to him that Robin had fallen in the world government's grip in order to save their lives. Intent on saving Robin, Luffy pushed the two buildings apart and pulled himself and Nami away from the outskirts of town, right before an enormous wave created by Aqua Laguna swallowed the area. However, the waves eventually reached and swallowed Luffy, Nami, Zoro, and Chopper as well, forcing Polly to rescue them. After finding out that Sanji had stowed away on the sea train, taking Robin to Eni's lobby, Luffy asked Polly for a ship to use to go after them. Due to the Aqua Laguna, Polly refused to do so until the next morning, causing Luffy to decide to take a ship by force. However, Kokoro then interjected and told Luffy that she could take him to another secret sea train. Kokoro took the Straw Hats into an abandoned warehouse where she showed them the runaway prototype train Rocket Man. Iceberg was already there and revealed that he had already got the train systems running, and as the crew prepared to depart, the Frankie family came in and pleaded to come aboard so they could save Frankie. Luffy agreed to this, and the train set off. The Straw Hats soon discovered that Polly and the Galilaw workers had stowed away on Rocket Man, and Luffy formed an official pact with Galilaw and the Frankie family to defeat their enemies and rescue Robin and Frankie together. Rocket Man headed towards a massive, deadly tidal wave, and after the Galilaw workers and Frankie family could not put a dent in it, Luffy and Zoro unleashed a combined attack to create a hole that the Rocket Man could roll through. Having gotten past the Aqua Laguna, Luffy, Zoro, and Nami equipped themselves for the battle ahead. They came to see some of the Puffing Tom's detached cars, and Luffy jumped in to see if Sanji was there. He was immediately confronted and shot by several world government agents, and as Rocket Man approached, Luffy told Zoro to bisect the cars. Soon afterward, the Rocket Man crew approached the Marine Captain T-Bone, who was running toward the rest of the Puffing Tom. Luffy told his allies to leave this to Zoro as well, and Zoro quickly dispatched T-Bone. Later, Luffy's group found Yokozuna standing in front of the oncoming train, and Luffy told the giant frog to get out of the way. Yokozuna hit Rocket Man off the rails, but after Luffy pulled him on board, Kokoro managed to get the giant frog to join the fight as she got the train back on the tracks. Soon afterward, the Rocket Man crew had Eni's Lobby in their sight. Water 7 Saga, Eni's Lobby Arc. The Frankie family approached the Rocket Man again after being derailed by Yokozuna, this time with Sanji and Usopp in tow. However, Usopp was wearing a mask and Luffy didn't recognize him, causing him to believe Usopp's claim that he was a different person known as Soga King. That was Usopp the whole time?! Iceberg outlined a plan for the Straw Hats to remain on Rocket Man while the Galley Law workers and Frankie family went ahead to clear the way to the main island for the pirates to quickly charge in and take on CP9. 
Luffy acknowledged this plan, but then proceeded to head out and jump toward Eni's lobby by himself, using Gomu Gomu no Rocket to launch himself over the main gate from the protective fence. Upon landing, he immediately charged toward the Tower of Justice and beat up the Marines in the way. Luffy quickly fought his way through to the main island gate and pulled himself up past it, and upon landing on the main island, he was surrounded by tens of thousands of Marine soldiers. Despite being vastly outnumbered, Luffy was able to terrorize the Marine forces, taking out hundreds of them in the span of seconds. Luffy eventually managed to elude the Marines and pull himself up to the roof of the courthouse, where Bluno arrived through an air door to confront him. Bluno told Luffy that he and his allies were committing a grave offense with their invasion, but Luffy didn't care and charged toward him. Despite Bluno using Takai, Luffy's strike was still powerful enough to injure him, and Luffy was then able to keep up with the agent despite him using Soru and smash him into the floor. Luffy managed to dodge Bluno's rapid attacks, but the agent then used his Doa Doa no Mi powers to create doors in the floor under Luffy's feet, trapping him. Bluno then turned Luffy's face into a revolving door, which heavily distracted him, but Luffy was able to still dodge his Rankyaku strike by going down through the floor. Luffy and Bluno then sparred some more, and despite the pirate being able to keep up with the agent's superhuman movements, he was unable to gain the upper hand. To enable himself to become stronger, Luffy activated a new ability called Gear 2, where he inflated his blood vessels, causing his blood to flow at a faster rate. Luffy then punched Bluno with such speed that even the agent with his Soru ability couldn't keep up, and proceeded to heavily injure him with powerful blows. But Luffy easily dodged him before striking him with Gomu Gomu no Jet Bazooka. The attack broke through Blue Nose Takai and greatly injured him, and when the agent stayed on his feet afterward, Luffy prepared to activate a new gear to become even more powerful. Blue Nose then lost consciousness and fell to the ground, and Luffy noted that his body was extremely tired due to not being used to the strain of Gear 2 yet. He then shouted out to the Tower of Justice where Robin was, saying that he had come for her. Luffy was able to regain his energy by pulling two slabs of meat out of his pockets that he had packed as a box lunch, and called for anyone to come out of the Tower of Justice. Frankie then blasted himself and Robin out of the tower, but they were stopped by a fence and had to pull themselves onto the tower ledge. Luffy prepared to pull himself to the tower, but Robin stopped him, saying that she wanted to die and never wanted to see him again. As she said this, Spandam and the CP9 agents came out to the ledge and confronted Luffy. At this point, the rest of the Straw Hats made it up to the courthouse roof, and as they joined Luffy in facing Robin and CP9, Luffy told Robin that she could choose to die if she wanted, but he wanted her to do so when she was with them. Robin responded that the entire world was against her, and that she didn't want the Straw Hats to consider her a burden given what they would face if she was with them. Spandam backed up that assertion, using it as an opportunity to boast of the world government's great might while pointing to the official flag sailing above him. However, Luffy responded by telling Soga King to shoot down the flag, and the sniper did so, burning it up. Spandam was left aghast that Luffy directly declared a war against the world government, and Luffy replied that he was fine with that. He then told Robin to say she wanted to live, and Robin tearfully did so. As the drawbridge between the courthouse and the Tower of Justice was lowered thanks to the Frankie family, the Straw Hats prepared to invade the tower. However, the drawbridge was stopped by a mortar strike, and Spandam quickly tried to lead Robin away. Soon afterwards, though, Nami received a call from Kokoro that she was piloting the Rocket Man to the Tower of Justice. Upon hearing this, Luffy grabbed all of his crewmates and jumped into the chasm between the courthouse and the tower, and they landed on Rocket Man as it leapt from the drawbridge and flew toward the tower. The train crashed into the tower before coming to a halt, and as the Straw Hats recovered from the wreck, they were confronted by the CP9 agent Fukuro. Fukuro revealed that Spandam and Luchi were taking Robin to the Gates of Justice, and Robin was chained by handcuffs made of sea stone that were unbreakable and prevented her from using her powers. Fukuro and the four other CP9 agents in the tower each possessed a key, only one of which would unlock the handcuffs. Luffy tried attacking Fukuro to get his key, and the agent departed. Luffy tried going after him, but he was held back by Zoro. The Straw Hats and Frankie told Luffy to go directly after Luchi and Robin, while they took on the other CP9 agents. Luffy ran up the stairs and managed to reach the room that the agents and Robin had just been in, though it was now deserted. He then started running towards the Gates of Justice. He made it to the other end of the tower, but found nothing but water in between it and the gates, and so tried to think of a way to get across. He tried rowing a small boat there, but the rough ocean currents destroyed the boat and left him floundering in the water. Fortunately, Chimney and Gonbi arrived and retrieved Luffy from the water, having come to tell him that there was an underground passage from the tower to the gates. 
The trio raced down a flight of stairs and came to a giant steel door. Despite the door being locked, Luffy was able to break through it by activating a new gear called Gear 3, and Chimney and Gonbi were shocked upon seeing Luffy shrink to the size of a child after using it. However, Luffy quickly returned to normal size as he ran down the hall toward Robin. Luffy eventually ran to a door which he was able to kick through and found himself in a large storeroom in a tower propping up the Bridge of Hesitation. There, he was confronted by Luchi. Luffy tried to get through to keep chasing after Robin, but Luchi stayed in his way and the two clashed, with their powerful strikes resulting in heavy collateral damage. Luffy managed to catch Luchi off guard with his speed and throw the agent aside, but Luchi quickly recovered and kicked the pirate before he could run out of the room. Their sparring was interrupted when Frankie suddenly arrived, possessing two of the CP9 agent's keys. He offered to help Luffy fight Luchi, but Luffy told him to keep going and save Robin. Luchi managed to overpower Luffy so he could attack Frankie. However, Luffy then activated Gear 2 and hit the agent with a powerful lightning-fast punches. Luchi transformed into his human leopard hybrid form and tried to attack Frankie again, but Luffy successfully overwhelmed him with Gear 2 enough to allow Frankie to exit the room. Luffy and Luchi continued sparring, but the agent then used a Renkyaku strike to rip a hole in the wall that would flood the underground passage with seawater, saying that Luffy's crewmates would either drown or be bombarded by the incoming Buster Call and he would be incapable of saving them. The room they were in started filling up with seawater, and Luffy followed Luchi up to the room above, which was above sea level and wouldn't be flooded. Luchi said that Luffy could go help his friends if he wanted, but Luffy responded that if he left Luchi alone, the agent would kill all of them. Luchi was able to overpower and injure Luffy with some advanced Shigan, Rankyaku, and Tekai techniques, so Luffy decided to show him Gear 3. Luffy blew into his thumb and inflated the bones in his right arm, making it equivalent in size to a giant's. He then threw a punch at Luchi with his giant right arm, demolishing the wall and tower in front of him and launching the agent out of the structure. Afterwards, Luffy transferred the air into his torso and pulled himself onto the marine battleship that Luchi had fallen onto, where he proceeded to transfer the air into his leg and unleash a powerful stomp that wreaked tremendous destruction. Luchi leapt onto the mast and transformed into his full leopard form, allowing him to maul Luffy's left shoulder. Luffy brought the air to his torso to repel Luchi, but proceeded to be overwhelmed by the agent due to Gear 3 reducing his speed. However, Marine Vice Admiral Onigumo then had his ship fire at the ship Luffy and Luchi were on in order to kill the former, but Luffy was saved from its destruction when he was forced to release the air, inflating his body, blowing him back to the prop towers where he was before. But since he was the size of a child again due to Gear 3's side effects, Luffy tried to run and hide from Luchi until he returned to normal. This tactic did not work, as Luchi found Luffy and assaulted him with Shigan before smashing his small body up against a wall, trapping him. Fortunately, however, Luchi became affected by damage that Luffy had given him earlier and was stopped from unleashing a deadly attack, and enough time passed to allow Luffy to return to normal size. Luffy then activated Gear 2 once again, despite the potentially debilitating effect it could have on his body. Luffy Luffy was able to overwhelm Luchi with his attacks, but Luchi then attacked him with a new technique called Rokuogan, a Rokushiki ability accessible to those who had mastered the normal six techniques. This technique created a shockwave that damaged Luffy internally, much like an impact dial, though with significantly greater power. As the walls around them started to crumble from the bombardment, Luffy looked outside and saw his crewmates on a nearby part of the bridge encouraging him. Luffy resumed fighting Luchi, but the agent noted that his Gear 2 power appeared to have lost its edge before attacking the pirate with another Rokuogan strike, causing him to collapse on the floor. However, Usopp then called out to Luffy, having removed his Soga King mask, and also called out Luchi, saying he would be the agent's next opponent. Luffy protested, and Usopp said he would need to get back up and win if he wanted to keep Luchi away from him, saying that they would all go back together once the agent was defeated. Spurred on by Usopp's words, Luffy got back up and exchanged a flurry of blows with Luchi. Luchi then wrapped his tail around Luffy's body and struck him with another Rokuogan, but despite taking that attack, Luffy quickly got up. He then assaulted Luchi with a flurry of Gear 2 punches in a technique called Gomu Gomu no Jet Gatling, which sent the agent crashing into the wall and knocking him unconscious. Victorious at last, Luffy shouted out to Robin that they would be going back together. However, Luffy then collapsed from his wounds, and though he heard Usopp's call to join them on an escape ship and become surrounded by all five of the Buster Call battleships, he stated that his body couldn't move at all. However, Usopp had Robin push Luffy off the edge of the prop tower with her ability, and as Luffy fell toward the ocean, the Going Merry suddenly surfaced, giving the Straw Hats a chance to escape. Luffy fell into the ocean, but was quickly rescued by Kokoro, who tossed him onto the Mary. As the Straw Hats collected themselves, Robin thanked everyone for saving her, and Luffy grinned in response. 
The marine battleships prepared to fire at the Mary, but their aim was thrown off due to Sanji having closed the Gates of Justice, which created violent whirlpools. One of the ships managed to lock onto the Mary and fire, but Zoro and Sanji used Luffy's body to intercept the cannonballs and launch them back at the marines. Frankie used coup de vent to blast the Mary away from the battleships, allowing the Straw Hats to sail away from Eni's lobby victorious. Once they reached safety, Usopp put his Soga King mask back on and lied that Usopp had gone off on another boat, which Luffy believed. The Straw Hats then encountered a galley lost ship captained by Iceberg, and as this happened, the entire bow of the Mary nearly broke off entirely. Luffy begged Iceberg to help Mary, saying that the ship was essentially their crewmate. However, Iceberg replied that the best thing to do for the Mary would be to let it rest. After a few seconds, Luffy solemnly accepted this, and after his crew had evacuated the ship, Luffy used a torch to set it on fire before disembarking onto a small rowboat. Luffy thanked the Mary for all it had done to them, and as the ship burned, it stunningly spoke to the crew like it had during its arrival on Eni's lobby, apologizing for being unable to carry them further. Mary's words caused Luffy to start bawling as he apologized to the ship for treating it as poorly as he had. However, Mary then responded it was happy to have gotten this far, and thanked the Straw Hats for taking care of it as it broke down and sank into the sea. Water 7 Saga, post Eni's Lobby Arc As everyone relaxed at Water 7 two days later, Frankie decided to build a ship for the crew out of the special wood called Atom Wood. However, at that point, Marines led by Vice Admiral Garp broke into Iceberg's mansion where everyone was staying and punched the still-asleep Luffy to wake him up. To everyone's shock, Luffy revealed that Garp is really his grandfather, and revealed the training Garp put him through as a child. Garp soon told Luffy about the Four Emperors and how Shanks was one of them. Soon after, Garp asked Luffy about his meeting with his father, as Luffy was surprised to learn he had a father and he encountered him in Logetown. Garp casually revealed the name of Luffy's father, known as Dragon the Revolutionary, who is considered by the world government to be the worst criminal in the world. Luffy did not know of Dragon, as he is met with surprise from his crew and friends, before he turned to Robin, who informed him why his father was infamous. Afterwards, Garp said that it was supposed to be a secret. Sometime after, Sanji revealed to the Straw Hats that Usopp was planning to rejoin the crew. While Luffy, Nami, and Chopper wanted him to rejoin and planned to invite him back, Zoro insisted that Luffy should be a firm captain on his position and Usopp shouldn't return so easily, as he should return on their terms, not his. Zoro even threatened to leave the crew if Usopp was allowed to rejoin without asking for forgiveness for his behavior. Luffy understood the message and agreed with Zoro's view on the situation. A few days later, Chimney, Gonbei, Mozu, and Kiwi burst in on the Straw Hats to tell them that their new ship was complete. Shortly after, Zambai and the rest of the Frankie family also appeared, revealing to the Straw Hats their new bounties. They then revealed that their boss also received a bounty, which led them to the Straw Hats who they begged to let him join their crew. Afterwards, the Straw Hats excitedly left to Scrap Island, where their new ship was moored. There, Iceberg unveiled their new caravel, much to the pirates' delight. After briefly exploring the ship, Luffy asked Iceberg where Frankie was. Having discerned that the young captain wished to recruit Frankie as their shipwright, Iceberg advised Luffy that if he really wanted Frankie, he would need to use force. With the help of the rest of the Frankie family, Luffy got a hold of Frankie's underwear as a bargaining chip to get him to join his crew. Frankie simply posed naked, unabashed, and said, I'm still a man, naked. Meanwhile, Sanji came running with Zoro to tell everyone that Vice Admiral Garp had sailed on the opposite shore into attack position. Luffy then threw Frankie's swim briefs back and told him to sail with them. Frankie then stated that he did want to see his dream ship reach the end of the world and become the greatest ship ever built. Frankie agreed to join after this. Shortly after, Garp appeared and started attacking the Straw Hats and their new ship. At that moment, Usopp tried to rejoin the crew, but because of Zoro's speech, he was ignored until he apologized. During the struggle between Garp and the Straw Hats, Usopp finally apologized and admitted that he wanted to rejoin. On that note, Luffy tearfully accepted him back into the crew. With Usopp and Robin's return, Frankie wished to grant the ship its new name. And while most of the Straw Hats gave some suggestions, with Luffy giving some of the more ridiculous ones, they in the end went with Iceberg's suggestion, the Thousand Sunny. After escaping Garp's onslaught of iron balls using their new ship's emergency escape feature, the coup de burst, the newly formed Straw Hat crew sailed off to find their next adventure. Which we will pick up on in The Life of Luffy Part 3 whenever that comes out. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.